Book 22, Death in the Great Hall. Spoiler alert. So you might be thinking, oh my gosh, the Odyssey, nothing ever happens. Just a lot of talking. It takes forever. This book, all the action happens. So let's go. All right. So remember, Odysseus is standing in front of the suitors. Telemachus is next to him with his spear. He still dressed as the beggar. We are like this book begins right where the last book ended. Now, shrugging off his rags, the wiliest fighter of the islands left and stood on the broad door sill, his own bow in his hand. So now he gets rid of the rags so that he no longer looks like a beggar and stands in the door frame. Um, the door is shut and locked and he has his bow in his hand. He poured out at his feet a rain of arrows from the quiver. So he like dumps out all the arrows in front of him and speaks to the crowd. So much for that. Your clean cut game is over. Now watch me hit a target that no man has hit before. If I can make this shot, help me, Apollo. So he, you know, poses. He's got his bow ready. He drew to his fist the cruel head of an arrow for Antinous. Just as the young man leaned to lift his beautiful drinking cup, embossed, two-handled, golden. The cup was in his fingers. The wine was even at his lips. And did he dream of death? How could he? In that revelry, amid his throng of friends, who could imagine a single foe, that was strong foe indeed, could dare to bring death's pain on him and darkness on his eyes? Odysseus's arrow hit him under the chin and punched up to the feathers through his throat. So Antinous, one of the two main suitors, was just like drinking, laughing, still having a good time. He had his two-handled cup. He's drinking some wine. It's at his mouth. He just got shot in the throat. He does not make it. Backward and down he went, letting the wine cup fall from his shocked hand. Like pipes, his nostrils jetted crimson runnels, a river of mortal red. And one last kick upset his table, knocking the bread and meat to soak in the dusty blood. Now as they craned to see their champion where he lay, the suitors jostled and upward down the hall, everyone on his feet. Wildly, they turned and scanned the walls in the long room for arms. But not a shield, not a good ashen spear was there for a man to take and throw. All they could do was yell in outrage at Odysseus. So remember, they had all the weapons. There's no shields. There's no weapons. Everything's gone. So once they realize what happened, that their like head guy has been shot, and they, they're scrambling, they're going to fight back. They have no weapons. What are they going to do? They're going to yell at Odysseus. Foul to shoot at a man. That was your last shot. Your own throat will be slit for this. Our finest lad is down. You killed the best on Ithaca. Buzzards will tear your eyes out. For they imagined, as they wished, that it was a wild shot, an unintended killing. Fools not to comprehend that they were already in the grip of death. But glaring under his brows, Odysseus answered, You yellow dogs, you thought I'd never make it home from the land of Troy. You took my house to plunder, twisted my maids to serve your bed. You dared bid for my wife while I was still alive. Contempt was all you had for the gods who rule wide heaven. Contempt for what men say of you hereafter. Your last hour has come. You die in blood. Okay. As they took this in, sickly green fear pulled at their entrails to so their stomachs. They're starting to feel sick to their stomachs. They're realizing, like, this is serious. This is not some random beggar. Their eyes flickered, looking for some hatch or hideaway from death. Eurymachus alone could speak. So Eurymachus and Antinous were the two head suitors. Antinous is dead, so Eurymachus is the only man left to be a leader of this crew of suitors. And here's what he says to Odysseus. If you are Odysseus of Ithaca, come back. All that you say these men have done is true. Rash actions, many here, more in the countryside. But here he lies, the man who caused them all. Antinous was the ringleader. He whipped us on to do these things. He cared less for a marriage than for the power Cronion has denied him as king of Ithaca. For that, he tried to trap your son and would have killed him. He is dead now and has had his portion. Spare your own people. So, um, Eurymachus, 
I think was his name. Let's yes, you're a Marcus. He's very clever. He's like, yeah, you're right. All this stuff was so bad, but that guy did it and you killed him. So spare us, right? He, he got his punishment. Let us go. As for ourselves, we'll make restitution of wine and meat consumed and add each one a tithe of 20 oxen with gifts of bronze and gold to warm your heart. Meanwhile, we can't blame you for your anger. So he's like, chill, chill, chill. Yeah, we stole. We stole your oxen. We stole your wine. We'll pay all that back in the world. We'll give you gold and bronze. I mean, if that guy, the bad guy, he's dead. Just let us go. We'll give you anything you want. Do we think Odysseus is going to have mercy on them? Not for the whole treasure of your father's. All you enjoy, lands, flocks, or any gold put up by others, would I hold my hand? So he's like, nothing's going to stop me from shooting all these arrows. There will be killing till the score is paid. You forced yourselves upon this house. Fight your way out or run for it if you think you'll escape death. I doubt one man of you skins by. So Odysseus makes it very, Odysseus makes it very clear. Everyone's going to die. They felt their knees fail and their hearts, but heard Eurymachus for the last time rallying them. Friends, he said, the man is implacable. Now that he's got his hands on bow and quiver, he'll shoot from the big stone door there until he kills us to the last man. Fight, I say. Let's remember the joy of it. Swords out. Hold up your tables to deflect his arrows. After me, everyone, rush him where he stands. If we can budge him from the door, if we can pass into town, we'll call out to the men to chase him. This fellow with his bow will shoot no more. So, I mean, your markets kind of has a good plan. Lift up your tables, use them as a shield, get close to him. Once you get close enough, get him with your sword, even though he's got an arrow. One of us will be able to get him. We can knock him away from the door. We can run and go get help. He drew his own sword as he spoke, a broad sword of fine bronze, hung like a razor on either edge. Then, crying hoarse and loud, he hurled himself at Odysseus. But the kingly man let fly an arrow at that instant, and the quivering feathered butt sprang to the nipple of his breast as the barb stuck in his lip. So the downward angle goes in through his nipple and gets his lip. The bright broadsword clanged down. He lurched and fell aside, pitching across his table. His cup, his bread and meat were spilt and scattered far and wide, and his head slammed. Revulsion, anguish in his heart, with both feet kicking out. He downed his chair while the shrouding wave of mist closed on his eyes. Eurymachus is dead. So now our two main suitors, they're gone. It's Odysseus with his arrows and a bunch of Mean old jerks. Amphimonius now came running at Odysseus, broadsword naked in his hand. He thought to make the great soldier give way at the door. So another suitor's running at him like, I'm going to get you. But with a spear throw from behind, Telemachus, Telemachus, excuse me, Telemachus hit him between the shoulders. And the lance head drove clear through his chest. He fell. He left his feet and fell forward, thudding forehead against the ground. Okay. Telemachus swerved around him, leaving the long dark spear planted in, in Amphimonius. If he paused to yank it out, someone might jump from behind or cut him down with the sword. At the moment, he bent over. So he ran, ran from the tables to his father's side and halted, panting, saying, Father, let me bring you a shield and a spear, a pair of spears, a helmet. I can arm myself on the run, and I'll give outfits to Eumaeus and this cowherd. Better to have equipment, said Odysseus. Run then, while I hold them off with arrows, as long as the arrows last. When all are gone, if I'm alone, they can dislodge me. So it's like Odysseus is realizing now the magnitude of what he's doing, and he's like, okay, I'm going to keep shooting arrows, but once the arrows are gone, like, yeah, they actually could defeat me, so you go do that thing you're going to do. Quick upon his father's word, Telemachus ran to the room where spears and armor lay. So, you know, he's the prince. He knows where the weapons are. He has the key. He gets the weapons. He caught up four light shields, four pairs of spears, four helms of high of war, high plumed with flowing manes, and ran back, loaded down to his father's side. 
So he got four of everything for himself, Odysseus, the swineherd, and the cowherd. So it's four men against however many are left, 100 minus three or something. He was the first to pull a helmet on and slide his bare arm in a buckler strap. So like he, he puts on the helmet and he puts his arm through the strap of the shield. The servants armed themselves and all three took their stand beside the master of battle. While he had arrows, he aimed and shot and every shot brought down one of his ugly enemies. But when all barbs had flown from the bowman's fist, he leaned his bow in the bright entryway beside the door and armed a four plied shield hard on his shoulder and crested helm, horse tailed, nodding stormy upon his head and took his tough and bronze shod spears. So he shoots all the arrows he has, and then he has to fight with his shield and his spears. Now this is where we have a dot, 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 and we have some italics. The textbook is going to summarize this battle. The suitors make various unsuccessful attempts to expel Odysseus from his post at the door. Athena urges Odysseus on to battle, yet holds back her fullest aid, waiting for Odysseus and Telemachus to prove themselves. Six of the suitors attempt an attack on Odysseus, but Athena deflects their arrows. So Athena is there on their side. They are going to make it just fine. Odysseus and his men seize this opportunity to launch their own attack, and the suitors begin to fall. At last, Athena's presence becomes known, known to all as the shape of her shield becomes visible above the hall. So then she basically makes her symbol. I always envision this as like Batman with that symbol um she makes her shield visible and everyone's like oh okay we're cursed like we have no hope the suitors recognizing the intervention of the gods on odysseus's behalf are frantic to escape but to no avail odysseus is blocking the door odysseus and his men are compared to falcons who show no mercy to the flocks of birds they pursue and capture soon the room is reeking with blood Thus, the battle with the suitors comes to an end. Odysseus prepares himself to meet Penelope. So, all the suitors are dead. They killed them all. All dead. Now he's going to go hang out with his wife. Let's see what happens. <laughs>